Um, like I said, today is the sixth anniversary of the Fog and Business Association. We're a volunteer, total volunteer organization. Uh, we've awarded over $13,000 in scholarships to Paulding County Schools and want to be active in Paulding County in any way we can. So if you know of a, a need that we can fulfill, we'd appreciate you letting us know about it so we can get involved. Anything that's coming up, uh, that uh, a special event that's coming up, we'd love to help out with it. Uh, I myself love that stuff. It's a good way to get out and promote my business and promote Paul and Business Association and promote whatever cause it is you have going on. Today we have a guest speaker, uh, Mr. Tommy Graham. He is our Post 3 Commissioner. He's been the Post 3 Commissioner since 2008. Uh, he's a life lifelong resident of Paulding County. He graduated from Paulding County High School, uh, went to Georgia State University School of Business, and is a graduate of the School of Banking at LSU. He owns and manages self-storage facilities and leases industrial property in Dallas. He's a former chairman of the Paulding County School Board, a member of the Paulding County Chamber of Commerce, and he is active in the Praise Academy. He used to be on the board there, but still active through his grandchildren that he has going there. He's been married to Kathy Morgan Graham for 25 years. They have three daughters, uh, Laura, Jennifer, and Ansley, three grandchildren, Tara, Bryson, and Jaden, and two son-in-laws, Dustin and Eric. If you would, please help me welcome Mr. Graham. Brad, uh, is this my timer here? Or is it going to buzz or, or talk? Or something? We'll, we'll just uh, let you go as long as you want to. Right. Uh, now, I am not Deanna's first choice. She asked four people before she got to me. And she told me one day, she said, please do this. I can't get anybody else. And I felt kind of like, in 1976, I went to hear the Eagles at the Omni, and a lot of y'all may not even know who that is or, or where that is. But there was an unknown band at that time that was the warm-up band, and it was Fleetwood Mac. So I kind of feel like Fleetwood Mac, except all y'all came to hear the Eagles, and the Eagles ain't here. So <laughs> I'm, I'm what you got. Uh, I am not a much of a public speaker. I talk. Uh, I don't read a teleprompter. So uh, what I'm going to share with you is thoughts that are in my head, and then I'm going to open it up for questions and whatever you want to ask. Uh, to give you a little bit about the county, of course, uh, one of the main things going on around here is, is the East Town Parkway uh, that they're busily work, busily, everybody say that word, working on. Uh, everything is complete up to the bridge, so all they lack is from the bridge down to 278. They are still on target to meet their end of July deadline, other than the rain is affecting them some and maybe some delays. You can see the Silver Comet Trail is actually, they have a tunnel, and it will actually go under the East Town Parkway. Uh, of course, the intersection there at Rosedale will be totally changed. It will be Rosedale and the East Town Parkway, and Cleveland now is on down the street. But that's progressing on. Uh, as far as, as things that have been going on, as far as industry, of course, with the economic development, uh, Interroll is busily working on their 90,000 square foot building, which will hire about 70 people. They are scheduled to be in their office, or they're hoping to be in there by the end of October. Uh, Ronke International, which bought a building over here at 63 Duncan Circle, they are moving their North American headquarters here from uh, New Jersey. They are a material, or, or best way to describe it, anybody in here use any L'Oreal products? Okay. Well, they got the stuff that puts it in there. All right. They, they sort it. Uh, they can sort the, the bottles and so forth. They actually have the equipment that fill it, and it's all automated. They're based in, in Milan, Italy, and like I say, this is their North American headquarters. They'll hire about 10 to 15 people. Uh, in fact, the first people that they're looking for are uh, electrical engineers. Uh, so again, this is more high pay. Of course, what you do with them is, is travel. Uh, I know that we, that Jamie and them just made a, an announcement that they've got a certified DEF distributor that's located down on International Parkway that and I saw one of their trucks the other day 
but that's moving. Uh, you know, a lot of things going on. Uh, one question that, that comes up, and again, I've been here my whole life, graduated from Paulding County High School when it was the only high school, like, just like Ellis did. There were 200 and something people that graduated, and I'll say that less than 10% of those people have been able to work here. I've been able to work here all my life except for six months too long that I worked on Shambly Tucker Drive. Uh, but other than that, I've been employed here. Uh, and jobs are important. But community is just important. So you can't, you have to say, okay, jobs, but jobs at what cost? And one of the instances of that, uh, there was a zoning uh, that the, where the IBA bought 50 something acres of land off of Old Mill Road. Uh, they wanted to have it zoned for industrial, but after really looking at what the property was and really looking at what they wanted to do and what was around it, it didn't make sense, you know. So you, if you destroy your community for jobs, you haven't helped it. So it's a community-based effort. As uh, far as other things that are going on, of uh, course, we're in the budget process. Uh, this year is the first year since I have been elected that the digest didn't drop. It actually ticked up uh, about, I think, a half a percent. A uh, good portion of that was caused from some new construction. So for the first time in five years, we're going to do a budget that your revenue did not decline. Uh, so as we had continued cutting each year, our revenue, our expenses matched our revenue. Of course, now we eliminated uh, any kind of fixed access purchases, replacing equipment. I mean, you got yellow equipment out there that you hadn't replaced in five years. You got cars you hadn't replaced in five years other than sheriff's cars, and that's paid for by Splash. Uh, so, and, and we maintained a fund balance uh, or a reserve. We did not use that reserve under operating expenses. Now, our own financial policies require us to keep a, a, uh, a minimum. Uh, that's how we keep the bond rating that we have. But this year is the first year that we are able to use some of that in order to uh, buy new equipment, buy vehicles that need to be replaced, uh, and actually increase the amount of money that we put toward paving roads. Uh, another issue that, and I'll get back to that, but one other issue that, that uh, we have 67 developments, which represent about 9,000 vacant lots. And of those 67 developments, there was, for one white reason or another, either the FDIC took over the bank or the FDIC wouldn't honor it or it was a bad bond or whatever, we had no bond in order to do fine street topping some of those. So we created a, a group called the Infrastructure Task Force, which is working through how to fix that. Uh, this year, we're actually developing a three-year plan to complete all these. Last year, or we just left contract that we fixed several of them. Uh, this year we've allocated $750,000 toward fixing those and hopefully over the next two years we'll get all those resolved. Now, uh, something that I'm working on because again, as we've gone through this process of having to, as our digest fell, the, you know, the, we had to raise the millage rate in order to keep revenues as neutral as possible. Now, since I've been on uh, the commission, since the very first budget I voted on to this one, we've cut expenses by $12 million. So we've continued to cut rep, uh, expenses. But the commitment we made was, as the digest comes back up, we'll lower the millage rate. One of the things that I'm working on is to have legislation that will, re will require uh, voter approval, but to actually for homeowners to raise the, the, the state will allow, of course the state is, has a mandated $2,000 homestead exemption, but they will allow the county to increase that. So what I'm working on is actually to increase that homestead exemption so that as the value comes back, the homeowner is going to get a benefit for it. Not only will we lower the millage rate, 
uh, as it goes up, but to protect the homeowner because they're the ones who bear most of the tax burden. Unfortunately, in Paulding County, 85% of our property tax revenue comes from residential property. Okay, so it's something that we've got to change. Uh, with that, I don't know what else to tell you. If y'all want to ask me questions, and if I don't know the answer, Deanna will write the question down and give me your name and phone number, and I will get you an answer. So it's y'all's time. Whatever you want to ask. Yes, I am the shortest commissioner, okay? If anybody <laughs> wanted to know that. I do not have the biggest head. That's David Austin. So, uh, and I definitely don't have the biggest ego. We won't mention any names on that. Any questions? Don't be shy. Yes, sir. With the 85% coming from residential, what are, what are some things Pauling is doing to shift that? I know there's a lot of development going on, a lot of great things. Will the hospital help that, the movie theater, all the things that are going on, not theater, but movie uh, industry? Uh, the, uh, the hospital will not because the hospital doesn't pay property taxes, okay, from a standpoint of tax revenue. Uh, the actual movie uh, the, or the film studio itself is actually owned by the IBA but what is not is uh, July the 12th is the goal to close on what they call the uh, Haddad uh, property which he has a he provides rental equipment to the movie industry he has a facility in New York Pennsylvania Michigan and now he has one in Georgia Okay, so he has already hired two people, but he'll move into his 16,000 square foot facility uh, and he pays property tax, uh, plus business license and all those things. Also, uh, when he moves in, he is bringing, there is a catering company that is coming with him. And these people service the movie industry throughout the state of Georgia. So it's not just for here that we're building the infrastructure to support the business. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir? Where is that property located? Which property? The one that you were just seeing. The one where uh, uh, yeah. it's in the new industrial park in Dallas where they bought uh, there on the old 278, there for, uh, down the street from where BLD is. There's an industrial park there. Uh, he is going into that. There is another company that they're working with uh, to build a facility in there, but they haven't got all that worked out yet. Other questions? Don't be shy. Yes, sir. Thank you. Give us an update on the water reservoir. Water reservoir. Um, to be honest, I don't know for sure if we've got the official 404 permit. It's been a nightmare, uh, which that is the permit that will allow you to build it. And with that is a, uh, you also have to get a permit to withdraw the water out of uh, the Etowah River. Uh, but currently we have uh, secured funding of about $32 million uh, through the state of Georgia. 29 million of that is through the governor's res reservoir program and there's another round this coming year that we'll get to apply for about another 30 million that we hope to get. We have contracted with Arcadis to actually do the design of the reservoir uh, or what they call I guess bid, bid design not final design which will include the water treatment includes the pipeline to the Etowah River, all that's been located and securing right away and all that. So we're moving if we could just get the federal government to move to. So but we're progressing. Yes sir. the bat is officially <laughs> we're okay. Okay. So in fact uh, Mayor Debbie and I dangerously put our lives at stake and stood on the bridge on Highway 92 in Hiram and had our picture made with Scott Green for a, a, a uh, article that's been done about it. But no, we got signed off. All of the 92 section has been relieved of the bat so that they can progress. 
uh, as I understand the plans and the commitments they've given to us is that right away purchase for uh, our section which is from Malone Road in in Douglas County to Nebo Road will be in what they call next year's funds which begin in July so they're hoping spring of 2014 that they will actually be able to start acquiring right away on that section now. It's it's one of those things that's on the list, and to my knowledge, no, there's nothing new. I know that there was some, something going on. I hadn't had a chance to check there that they're doing some surveying on 61, but I also know that there is a group that's trying to buy a corner at 278 and and 61 in order to put another center there. So I know that some of it because uh, DOT approval for his entrances and so forth is going to be critical to whether they do their deal or not. So. Will that the bridge? The bridge over the Silver Comet Trail? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's one that definitely, you know, we, uh, we actually completed or opened back up Harris Road or for those of you that are from here, Humpback Bridge Road. Uh, we actually put a new bridge over for that purpose so that the people from Wendell had an access in order to relieve traffic on State Highway. Unfortunately, the county has to spend its own money uh, to reroute people off the state roads because there has not been a uh, capacity improvement project on a state highway in Paulding County <coughs> since 1994. Not, there, I mean, there's not been one. I mean, any expansions that have been done, the county paid for them and actually did them. So, but we're working on it. Other questions? Given just what you said, uh, how would you rate our state legislative delegation? <laughs> 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 it's not all their fault. It's some stuff that occurred in the past. Uh, unfortunately, see, we we are I, we're a member of the Northwest Georgia Regional Commission, okay? But we don't get any road funding road funding through the Northwest Georgia Regional Commission. All of our road funding comes through the ARC, so we're split. We lend our good air to Atlanta to help their bad air. I mean, our, I, I mean, I'm serious. Our air monitoring station is in Yorkville. Do, I bet half of you don't even know where Yorkville is, okay? But there ain't nothing but trees up there. And we're in the non-attainment zone. So we've been punished because of a lot of that. And I won't say that some of it wasn't caused from some relationship between the governor's office and some of our local people that hurt us over the past, but you know, right now the state doesn't have money. I mean, that's the biggest thing is there's not enough road money. Other questions? Did I do good on that without? Well, I, I, I would have uh, thought you would be more specific, but that's fine. <laughs> I mean, there's, a, you know. <laughs> That's fine. I, I, I'm, I'm happy. He's trying yeah. to hand you a shovel. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm not going to dig a hole. Yeah. Anything else? Come on, don't be shy. On the west side of Parkway, where they're going to go from two lane to four lane, uh -huh. from the industrial park all the way around to 92, when's that going to be started? I know that it's in design. I think they are hoping to let that contract uh, this year. Uh, all of that will be paid for with splash dollars. We're in the process of completing what they call the uh, Seven Hills Boulevard, which actually gave in the Cedar Crest area another outlet to 92 through a parkway. I know that's the big project they're working on, but that's next is on that. You may have the airport. Uh, new at the airport. There, we, we have actually contracted um, for, I don't know how to explain, I guess the best thing is we have a contract with a company called Propeller Group. 
uh, and they are an aviation investment company. And we have a contract with them to help develop the airport. They actually have a lease option on a good bit of the property. Uh, they own several companies that do aviation business. Uh, a lot of these people are actually ex-Delta uh, people. Uh, and so we've contracted with them to promote and develop. In other words, one of the big things you have, a lot of times people want to, yeah, we'll come there, but you got to build us a building. Well, these people have the financial resources to build a building. That's how they'll make money, is they'll build the building and lease it to. Uh, they are working on some things uh, that they can't announce yet, but there's some stuff coming. Uh, I know they're working on the corporate hangar that actually collapsed and the two, uh, the gentleman was killed. Uh, I know the IBA is working to try to get that started back because it's, it's a need because there's some other industry that is looking and they need some hangar space for that. I did have one more question. I remember back in 2003, 2004, you were uh, instrumental in a program to bring the community together, uh, create a uh, concise uh, vision for the community. That kind of kind of what we're doing now is a, a uh, fruition or a result of that. But is there any effort to uh, again create a, a, a vision for the community? Um. As far as a formal effort, I'm not aware of any. Of course, what, what you, you try to do, and it, it's, I'm, I'm of the belief, unfortunately, the, I'll say at least half the people in our country don't believe this, but I don't believe that it's government's responsibility to solve our problems. I believe it's the community's responsibility and the government is there to assist. Uh, what the county commission is trying to do is set forth an example in the leadership to move us forward in a manner that would accomplish those things. We know that jobs is one of the most important things, but hey, to get jobs, you gotta have transportation. In other words, if you don't have good access, and that is one of the things that 92 will do. It actually gives, you, it gives the south side of the county access to an interstate that is good. Now I know you, I live down there and you got access, but you're not gonna drive a tractor trailer the way I go to get to, to I-20, but this will actually give good access to the interstate, so. Other questions? The new park board, you know, Billy Bullock Road down from the south side of the county, what's the status of that? What's that gonna entail? Uh, <coughs> one of the situations we have with the park splash, Right now, I think there is $12 million sitting there, okay? Uh, so we got lots of money to build parks. There's one small problem with that. It takes money to operate them. And we don't have the revenue to operate more parks. Now, on, on what's going on at, at on Billy Bullet Road is a design, low engineering is actually designing that and it will be more of what I would call a passive park, similar to what White Oak is. White Oak is actually the most active park that we have. It's not gonna be loaded up with ball fields and things like that, but more uh, passive activities. I know there's, a, uh, there's several playgrounds. There's a lot of things that's going in there, a lot of walking trails. It's a heavily wooded area anyway. Uh, in the initial design, I believe there are two lakes that will be in there for fishing, that kind of thing, depends on how it works out. Uh, there will actually be some pavilion <coughs> or enclosed building space, uh, just like what's at White Oak, so that you could uh, rent and lease and use. Uh, I know there's a large activity field, but it's not quote a ball field, but you know, you wanna have intramural sports there or whatever. So that's actually in the design. Right? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any thoughts on how the city has lowered tax rates? Any thoughts? Yes. I, I think I'll it's. I, I think it's a nightmare for the counties. I think that. Uh, can you imagine? We have. We get an influx of people moving in. Okay. So you moved here from Alabama, let's say. You're a family of four. You have one teenage that 
one teenager that drives, okay, and let's say you got one extra car. So you got four kids here, four cars. Can you imagine the shock you're gonna get when you go up to Bill Watson's office and wanna <laughs> buy your tag and you owe them $7,000 just to buy a tag? But that's what's gonna happen. I mean, places uh, like Columbus, uh, I, I mean, they're going to see a huge effect. If you could live in Phoenix City, uh, you get transferred to Fort Benning, okay? When you get transferred, you know, part of Fort Benning is actually in Lee County, Alabama. So you get transferred down to Fort Benning, you've got to buy new tags, you're going to be there for a couple of years. Well, you tell me where you're going to live. Are you going to live in Columbus, Georgia? Or are you going to live in Phoenix City, Alabama if you have three cars in their new cars? Uh, so, I, our local people did it though. And, and we have no idea what we're going to get in money. I know they claim we're going to get this, but we have no real idea. Now, you've got to realize the same people will be sending us that money that send us sales tax, and they can't give us the foggiest idea of where that sales tax money came from. I mean, there is no idea, there is no audit trail, there is nothing that we get from the Department of Revenue that makes any sense to that sales tax. It just shows up, and you take it, and that's all you can do. Other questions, comments? Y'all are an easy crowd. Ain't nobody asked me nothing hard yet. If not, thank y'all for having me.